Hey Tom, so you wanted to come here and put on a show. I think you succeeded. How are you feeling? I only just succeeded. Like Lebo, the South African, he was fourth at World Champs last year. I knew it was going to be tough to win it, but the crowd, Lebo, you know, the rest of the field, they pushed me round to that that world record. I can't believe it. Um, I came down from altitude last night, so I didn't really think I was that fresh and felt really good walking. So I felt technically quite strong, even though it's such fast pace. So yeah, the crowd were awesome again. So yeah, thanks to them and thanks to the organisers, you know, for making this possible. When we spoke after the trials, you said that if you were asked to do the Europeans tomorrow, you'd walk very quickly in the other direction. Is that a confidence boost? Are you feeling good now ahead of the European Championships, given that you're going to go back out to altitude, I think, later today? Yes, yeah, I'm back up tonight. Um, yeah, definitely. You know, we put, put a lot of training together. And I, 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 to be honest, I didn't think I would go anywhere near 1140, whatever it was today, that world best. So that's a big, big confidence boost because we use the indoor season to boost me for Glasgow, I'm uh, sorry, for Gold Coast. And I came home with a silver medal there. So, as you can see, we're trying to replicate that a little bit. And these shorter races, just get the legs going, you know, remind them how to go fast. Obviously disappointed with your last performance in front of a London crowd. <laughs> how much does that kind of, this put that to bed and you can move on and, and look confidently ahead of the Europeans? Yeah, 100%. It was heartbreak, to be honest, last year. Um, it, it broke me. It took me a long, long time to get over that. And it'll always be in the back of my mind, but I'd be a fool if I were to ignore that. And, and all the way today, I had to make sure my technique was efficient. Otherwise, I'd slow up or get disqualified, either or. And believe it or not, the faster I go, I think my technique's actually better because it's more efficient, it's smoother. Um, and so, yeah, coming back here, it was the same hotel, you know, we stayed in last night. And it was, I sat there at breakfast thinking, I remember having breakfast before that 20K. Gold Coast really took the pressure off. The Commonwealth Games took that pressure off. I put that to bed. And now I can go out and perform and, and really enjoy what I do. delighted with a performance like that and on a stage like this as well. Yeah, no, definitely. Obviously, I've been out for about two years. So, you know, to come back um, really strong after having like, lots of injuries and things, it's an absolutely fantastic opportunity to obviously compete in such an incredible crowd and compete with, obviously, a different guy, Tom. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have necessarily been here today. So... Yeah, really fortunate. And how has it been teaming up? Because I think this is just your second race together with Tom. <laughs> it's been a massive, uh, <laughs> a massive learning curve. Um, Tom's been absolutely amazing. So to be honest, like without how easy he is, like picking up on uh, guides, running tips, like I wouldn't really. It, not it doesn't normally take this like quick to to learn how to do. He's just been amazing at picking it all up. So. And your steps into guide running, um, how did you get involved and, and what was it like out there? Um, I think how I got involved is I was just in the gym and then Joe and Libby just came up and asked me if I'd fill in while Chris is injured and I'm actually really enjoying it, it's something that I probably never thought I'd do but I'm really enjoying learning a different event and being able to actually run with somebody is quite good. And I guess next up for you guys is the Europeans, is that right? We've got Euros in about a month, a month, so yeah, we're really looking forward to it. You know, we've obviously only been training for two weeks, so you know, we've got plenty of plenty of time to get some more practice in. I mean, you know, we've done, the, we've done this well in two weeks, so you know, who knows what we can do in four weeks. <laughs> Matt, how does a run like that leave you feeling ahead of the Europeans? It was a season's best, but I sense you wanted more. Um, I'm happy with it. It's consistency, but it's just not coming together just yet, and when it does, it, it will, but... Um, I'm still coming in heavy, and we just re all we really compare uh, wanting is Europeans, and that's the main goal. As long as I'm consistent, which my coach wanted, all my coach wanted, uh, I'm happy with it. But yeah, I came off the track wanting more, knowing that I had more in me. So I know when Europeans happen, it, it's gonna click. You just have to be patient, which is annoying. I'm confident in the fact that I can run 44 now consistently, and. That's the most amount of 44s I've done ever, most, most uh, races I've ever done. So I came into the chat knowing what shape I'm in, how to distribute my speed, and I know that there's a lot in there, so, so I'll go with it. you like this stadium? <laughs> I, you know, I actually ran in this stadium for the first time ever last week at the World Cup, and I think it was incredible preparation for today. I've always dreamt of running at the London Anniversary Games, so to come here, to leave with two seasons best, one PB, I'm extremely happy, extremely happy. You were saying a little bit earlier how you used to watch some of those athletes, and obviously they're your idols, but to be racing alongside them. 
It's a really hard thing to get your head around, if I'm honest. Um, I was saying to Shelly Ann after the race, I remember watching her in 2012 when I was about 13 and thinking, I really, really want to be like her one day. So to kind of have her to my left and be kind of pushing to beat her, I, my mind is, I'm trying to wrap myself around it to be honest, but um, yeah, I'm absolutely elated and I kind of had just to go and see us all on the level, play, level playing field and I'm happy that I did that and I got a PB out of it. How happy are you with that time? Um, I think you were saying earlier that you haven't run a PB since 2016. It's been a very, very long journey, I was saying earlier, it's been excruciating and the transition from a junior to senior is not easy by any means, but you know, I've had a really great team around me, an amazing team around me and we've kind of just focused on the process rather than the product and I knew the times would come, I just had to be patient. So I'm just so happy to have done it at the right time when it matters. What have you been concentrating on training? Is there anything that you can put this particularly down to? Um, there's a few things. Uh, I think firstly I'd say robustness. This is the first season I haven't been injured, so I think that was kind of first and foremost in my mind. Let's get through this season injury-free, then we're able to kind of nitpick and all the technical things I like to improve. But like I was saying earlier, I'm still 20, I'm still getting stronger, I'm growing, all these kinds of things. So I'll take the small wins along the way, but I know that I'm really far from the finished article. And this must be leave you feeling quite excited ahead of the European selection meeting. Yeah, so many people have asked me. I literally have no idea. I'm in an era where there's so many amazing British girls, we're all pushing each other, all running really, really well. Um, I was saying I'm happy that I'm in the mix with the relay now, um, but for individual, it's up to the selectors. I, I'm happy I put my best foot forward. This expression again as you cross the finish line. Did you enjoy that? You know, I, I almost never do it now, but I thought this is London, all the memories. I just, I just wanted to make that face just one last time. <laughs> it's good competition here. Um, these guys are extremely good runners. You can see it by, by the times they've done before. And, and now I'm also a good runner myself. And you no, know, today was all about running my own race. And um, it felt good. I managed to keep my rhythm and that's what it's all about. And I knew that I could run fast, but today I was, I was surprised and it felt good. How does it feel being back in this stadium with the memories that you've got? <laughs> As I was saying to, to the other guy, I just want to take this track with me home, but I just can't. And the, you know, the atmosphere is crazy. So, yeah, I love being back. Back on top in the Olympic Stadium. How are you feeling? Um, it's a great feeling. Uh, finally, it's coming together. I'm finally feeling confident on the runway. Um, thanks to the British crowd. It's always amazing to compete again in, in the Olympic Stadium and in front of the home crowd. They always get behind us and support us, and that's amazing. That's an amazing feeling. It was all about time and patience for me, and it came together today. And it's a good step towards performing well in European Championships. Um, it gives it gives me huge confidence because now I'm finally confident and comfortable on the runway, and now I can go and build on that and get better and sharper for the European Championships. I wouldn't be in a sport if I didn't want the the gold medal. So definitely working towards that. So Ronnie, this is your first race outdoors in the UK, your first race in London. What, how was the experience? Oh, it was amazing. You know, yesterday I was in here doing a kind of warm-up pre-meet stuff and I just was looking around and looking at how big the stadium was. It's definitely uh, the biggest place I've ever run in. So I was super excited about it and, you know, I produced a pretty good run today and, uh, I mean, that was amazing for me. And so I love this place. <laughs> I felt like I made a couple of mistakes and I still was able to uh, win the race and, and run really close to my PR two times. So uh, yeah, I definitely love the surface and love the track, love the people, love the crowd. It's, it was great. There's been a lot of talk about um, the next Usain Bolt. I heard you talking a little bit earlier that you don't want to be that next Usain Bolt. You want to be the first Ronnie Baker. Yes, I do. I want to be the first Ronnie Baker. And I have so much respect for Usain Bolt. I mean, I was someone asked me about this surface and how special it was and this, this, this place. And I had watched, I mean, today I was watching Usain Bolt's 2012 Olympic performance in the 100 when he ran 963. So, um, I mean, he's definitely a special person, an icon for our sport, but um, I'm trying to be the first Ronnie Baker. Um, not trying to necessarily fill his shoes, but just to be my own person. Lano, you must be really happy with that performance, and it must be a great confidence boost ahead of the European. That's definitely what I wanted. I, I wanted a confident booster going into Europeans. I mean, I, um, I've been running pretty well, and it's great to see that I was consistent in my race today, being able to challenge Ronnie to the finish line. Um, I'm not really known as a 100-meter guy, so... For me, I was just staying relaxed and having fun out there. And for not being a 100 meter guy in a yeah. field where I think the top six, all of you went under 10 seconds and you were the second of those, must feel good. <laughs> I feel really well. Um, those guys are really fast this season. They, they've been putting out amazing times and to see that I can come back again and perform really well like this, I'm really happy with it. 
And how much of the motivation is that individual medal? Um, obviously, we saw what happened at the Commonwealth. So that must be a real hunger for you. It is, definitely. Um, but for me, I'm not really focusing on getting the medal right now. For me, it's just getting get to European Championships, get to the rounds. And once I'm into the finals, we'll see what happens. I was so fatigued today. After I jumped that 92, I was running down the track celebrating like a buffoon. And my coach says, you better stop there right now. And then he's like, oh, yeah, because this competition's not over yet. It's not over yet. And I was, uh, I, uh, I saw Mondo over here gearing up for that best attempt on his great hair day. Um, and uh, I said, you know, he, even though he's jumping on borrowed poles, he could easily make this. Um, he's got that in his range. So uh, we, we <laughs> had to come keep, bring it back to the center a little bit before we reach, uh, leap out and try to jump the American record. Uh, taking two more attempts at it just stacks onto my experience. It's a boring athlete response, but it's a it's a special thing. And uh, you'll see, I have a surprise in my bag for one day when I when I when I actually do it, if I can do it. I believe I can. Um, but if the wind had been a little better, I think I'd have had some better shots at it. But taking two shots, three shots last week, and two shots in Paris um, gives me some more information to really make that awesome decision next time. And it's gonna be a special meet when I do it. Today, Renell put on an almost perfect competition. Only did he slip up a little. Only did he slip up a little. He missed one at 92. I grabbed my pole. I told my coach, he says, if we're going to win it, we're going to win it right here. We have to. Um, and so I won it. I jumped on that attempt, and I made Renault go to that even higher height to try to beat me. Um, and he, he is the king. He is a uh, roi, and he can do it. But not today. Guys, what are your reflections on, on that? Obviously, a great message to send out ahead of the Europeans. Yeah, it is a great message, but we just focus on ourselves. Um, we wanted to come out here and get the job done and have fun, really, with the team. Um, it was nice to, to round it off with a world lead and going forward into the champs, hopefully, and carry on this performance. To lay down a marker for the championships, is it, is it important, a performance like that? I definitely think it is important. It gives us confidence going into the European Championships. And as CJ mentioned earlier in the first interview, this is actually our first actual race together as a team for the season. Yeah. And we ran 36-6. I mean 37-6. It's spectacular and it's not much changing. And uh, this is the first time I'm actually running with these guys. Second like full time, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it, it can only get better for me. How do you feel coming into the team? Obviously you come into a winning team. <laughs> he's welcome. Pretty... He's got a place. <laughs> Look where he's running, he's flying. I feel pretty well. I'm, I'm really happy to be a part of the quartet. And, uh, I'm, I'm just looking forward to going out the age 70 with my best performance and the guys can do the rest and um, hopefully we come away with great medals. CJ, how did you feel about starting running the Belia again and uh, bring back memories? Yeah, it does. It does. It always feels good. It's an amazing stadium and it's, and it's always going to be a special place for us. So it's nice to come out here, get the win, get the world lead and bring on Berlin. I think it was a solid performance. Um, I would have liked more, but uh, I'm happy enough with that. Um, there's definitely some things that need to come together. Uh, this is my last race now before the European Championship, so um, you know we'll do a little bit of work in training, and then uh, we'll see what happens come Championship time. I'm not where I want to be. Um, I've done reasonably decent training. Uh, there's definitely better si uh, signs that things will be better. Um, but yeah, I'm not quite where I want to be, but ultimately it doesn't matter too much because uh, I'm fit and healthy and going into the championships, you know, we'll bring the performance level up. Yeah, there's no feeling like a championships and um, a lot of time it's quite hard to try and to try and replicate that as, as we do try, you know, on the circuit, but there's nothing like a championships. Um, and for me, everything is just different, everything feels different and, uh, you know, the performance normally matches. So yeah, we'll, we'll uh, be ready to go. Yeah, first 100 in seven years. Um, successfully managed to beat my PB of 11.52 from nine years ago. Um, but that was just fun. You know, it's been, it's been a tough season. You need to remember what it's all about. Um, and I was, you know, off of the lane at short notice. And uh, I thought, why not? You know, there was uh, no reason not to do it. I don't think you should ever be afraid of something that you haven't done or something that you might not be very good at, you know. So I just go in and enjoyed it. As a, I thought it was a bit of a fan more than anything else, but it was, it was decent. Kenny, I think you liked the stadium in this track. How are you feeling after that race? I feel really good, you know. I think I hit a few hurdles, um, so I know that I can run faster. You know, my coach has been trying to keep me low-key this year. Um, so I'm starting to peak where I need to peak at. Um, the main aim is just to go and get the Diamond League uh, trophy and get the pie. 
um, that's all that my coach is picking me for and that's all I'm getting ready for. What are the emotions and the memories when you come back here? <laughs> um, it kind of just brings chills when I think about what I've done here. Uh, and it's so exciting to come back every year and for this to be my third Diamond League that I won. Um, this track kind of brings me luck. Yeah, I, love, I love coming here and competing in front of this crowd. Um, they've been so supportive in, of track and they really get into every single race. And um, I've had some pretty good performances over the years and um, this, I think it's my first win in the stadium. So pretty pleased with it. A couple of us, you know Crystal Hare and I, coming back from uh, Monaco two days ago. So the plan for me is just kind of sit in the pack. Didn't want to look at any splits. Um, with a lot of the, I noticed that a couple of the guys that went with the rabbit had a good size lead on us, and I was like, we're gonna have to get going now if we have any shot at winning. So um, I didn't really want to be the the main guy chasing, but uh, it was either I was gonna put myself in a position to win, or uh, um, I had to go after right then and there. I'm gonna go back to the states, get a couple weeks of easy, easy running, take some time off of races, come back for. for I'm next gonna feel so. I had nothing to lose really, and uh, the pace was set up perfectly for us from quick start to the opportunity. I was hoping I had a 44 in me somewhere, and when we went through pretty quick, uh, I knew it was on, so glad I could do that. But then both Guy and Dan went under 45, so it's a pretty good time for Orange Meat running in the UK. I'm going up summer, it's tomorrow, and then going to Europeans from there. So I just need to make sure I get race sharp. Uh, I'm fit, but I still feel a bit under raced, but it's too late now, so. The heats will be my next race. It's going to come to the Olympic Stadium and put together a good performance for a home crowd. So, I mean, obviously, I want to finish above fourth place. Nobody wants to come fourth, but um, I did a good time and it was a really, really high caliber field. So, overall, I'm yeah, I'm happy. I'm, I'm never one to shy away from hard races. I'm always known for kind of finding myself in the toughest fields of the year somehow. But that's just because I always want to test myself and I always want to put myself under pressure to run and execute my race plan among the best women in the world. So, again, I was not happy. <laughs> to come forward today, I did want to go and win, but um, that's just kind of what happens. You can't, you try to win every single race, but you can't. So it's about going out there, doing your best, and learning, and then improving that into the next couple of races, which for me is the European Championship. It's a pretty good feeling, you know, the second tournament for the season. Uh, I'm happy with the time. I think I executed the race pretty good. It's just now for me and my coach to you know go back to the drawing board. I mean I think this is the end of my season, but we left it on a pretty good mark, so you know we're just happy to see what we can build on for next year. Right now is um, basically testing the waters to see what I can do this season. I mean, as I said, as a second 200, so I mean we'll be working on a lot more speed uh, come next year, a lot more strength, you know, a lot of things, you know, a lot of work to um, put in, and I think something special can happen next year. Just to wait and see. I don't want to say it, but it will, it will be something special once everything comes together. If I run a season's best running like that, hopefully I can run a season's best running better in the future. Um, it was a race with a lot of flaws, which I'm happy about because I don't feel like I'm at my best. If I was to be at my best, I feel like I perfected my race and ran 21, 20.2, 20 then I'd have a bit of cause of concern. But I'm dropping time slowly but surely, and uh, I have two weeks to fine tune and really get right for Europeans, which is the ultimate aim for this season. Definitely, because I feel like I can chip more away at the bark, you know. Um, my progress is 1995, you know, and uh, I'm three times off that right now. That's a, that's, that's a big margin, and I want to get back to there. And I'm confident that, given the, by the end of the season, I can definitely drop some for sub 20. And how about the relay as well? You were on the track, you know, not long before this race. The time that you guys put out there is another phenomenal one. Your second best ever, I think. Indeed, indeed. Second fastest British time ever, and uh, we all feel like we've got more to give. You know, it wasn't an extremely competitive race, although some stellar teams were in there who won it pretty comfortably. So I'm sure given the occasion, to, you know, with the extra adrenaline of, say, a championship being Europeans and uh, everyone being at their best, I feel we can drop it again. But most importantly, it's coming with the goal at Europeans, which we want to secure first. Oh, I love it. It's a quick track. Yesterday, the guys warmed it up for me, so there was no excuse not to run a season's best today. So I'm happy to take that into perspective and go forward and continue to build upon this season. Were there any emotions? That expression when you crossed the finish line last time you were here was pretty immense. Yeah, so um, I'm not necessarily a nostalgic person, but when I 
I came here on Friday at an interview and uh, I was standing at the kind of the area where I went crazy, you know? So um, someone mentioned it to me and I remembered, so I thought about it then. But other than that, I like to move forward in this sport. People are always getting faster. You've got young guys popping out the woodworks, you know? I'm 24 now, I have to be vying for medals on the international stage. I'm no longer a newbie in this. I want to be up there with the best and I'm vying about to be there. Initially, I think when we spoke earlier on in the week, yeah. you didn't do that 100 meters. No. Today's been a busy day. Yeah, it's been a busy day today. I think that was the reason because I knew how intense today would be. I just wanted to use it as sort of getting shocked, getting fit. And uh, yeah, it's a bit of shame about the actual race itself because I felt like I'm in fantastic shape. Training's been going really well. It's sort of the best shape I've ever been in, really. And just couldn't execute a good race today. Stumbled a little bit at the start and just couldn't get myself going off the bend. Tried to come off the bend and just went backwards. So. Uh, just one of those things really. I've got a lot of work to do, but hopefully by the time Europeans comes, yeah. people will see what good shape I'm in. I can go and contest for the medals, which is the aim. So. I've always been someone who doesn't mind losing at, on the circuit, but making their mistakes. You don't learn if you don't make mistakes. And by the time it comes to the championships, things will be good and I'll be ready to go. So as long as I do that, that's what people remember. So for me, that's the most important thing. It was, a, it was a good relay and we've got fantastic depth with different people as well. You saw three GB teams out there and each ran really well. So it's a, yeah, it's just a, a test of who's fit at the champs, who's ready and that, that team will be picked up for that, who runs well at the champs. So uh, yeah, it's good. Having a time like that off a very safe changeover must be feeling quite excited about what you can do when you're really good. Yeah, we'd like to go faster. We know we're all in better shape than last year as well, uh, especially because Zarnel ran so well. So uh, yeah, next season, well, next championship, the European Championships, we want to go a lot faster and be challenging for that record again. So, uh, yeah, we want to be dominant in the relays from now on. Like, it's, we know we've got the speed and the changeover ability to, to contest with the Jamaicans and the Americans and the Japanese and the Chinese, and it's time we started doing that. So, yeah, I mean, I give it the best shot I could. I think I just went through the first half of the race a bit fast and that hit the legs and then the latter stages, but I gave it the best I could, like I always did, and it was. I really, uh, you know, top quality field out there today I was racing against. So, yeah, I think you know I'd, I'd like to run a bit better, but it's just still a good work out. So, yeah, I've run here for the past few years, and I love this event. It's always really great. So, um, yeah, I think it's just a really good kind of stepping stone towards Berlin. And, um, it's a little bit longer than 1500, but more or less the same distance. So, it's a good tryout for the European there as well. Uh, that, this is my last race, so I'm heading uh, out to St. Mertz tomorrow for a training camp and then um, after that, just straight to Berlin. It's an emotional day that you've done earlier at 7.55 and it felt so good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it felt so good. I mean, it felt awful as well because it hurt so much. Um, but more from the point of view of just registering a jump, to be honest, because I, it would have been quite a shame to run down and have three fouls. Um, I didn't quite have enough time to get my runway measured probably at the start, so um, I was playing catch up during that competition. But I knew I, I, I couldn't quite do it. I, I tried running down the runway in the warm up, and it just wasn't feeling very good at all. So it was nice to come wave, get quite emotional as I did during pretty much the entire competition. Um, and actually it's such a lovely, like, nice relief to be at the back end of that, that comp now. And it was, what was really interesting is that I didn't have the same emotions that I normally would about jumping badly, if that makes sense. I think I, my body and I have very much accepted that I'm not the athlete I was 18 months ago. Um, so I could actually properly enjoy it. And that's, that's a really rare thing that I think athletes ever get to do. So I'm thrilled to be with And the thing is, I, I've always been a fan of track and field and obviously my event in particular. And when we have the guys at like Louvo again, had a fantastic series of jumps. And Rushwell was jumping amazing. Americans look like they're coming back a bit. Henry Frayne again. Well, what's interesting, I'll be interested to look at ex it exactly. I think Henry Frayne might be the only person currently still jumping who was in that Olympic final back in 2012. So that was quite nice as well. And again, Henry's a lovely guy, so it's nice to, to be mixed up. And they're all a great bunch, and they're, they're going to go on and push the event on, and, and it's going to be brilliant from my point of view to watch, enjoy it, uh, and know that I had my sort of great success a few years ago, and I can now just sit back and relax. To come out, and the place where really it all started for me, it's, it's a lovely feeling, and I, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And Yeah, I, I think I couldn't have imagined any, any other or any better way to, to say goodbye.